When Alex and Sarah moved into their new house in the peaceful neighborhood of Oak Ridge, they thought they had finally found their dream home. The neighbors were polite, the streets were clean, and everything seemed perfect, except for the house directly across the street. From the moment they moved in, they noticed something unsettling. The old house across from theirs always had the blinds drawn, and no one ever seemed to go in or out. But the strangest thing of all was the feeling of being watched. No matter what time of day or night, Alex and Sarah felt a pair of eyes on them whenever they stepped outside. At first, they shrugged it off as nerves from moving into a new place. But as time went on, the feeling only grew stronger. Every time Alex mowed the lawn or Sarah watered the plants, they would glance toward the house across the street and catch a glimpse of something or someone watching them from behind the curtains. But whenever they looked directly at the window, the figure would disappear, leaving only an eerie emptiness. One evening, after a long day of unpacking, Sarah sat by the window, sipping her tea. The sun was setting, casting long shadows across the neighborhood. She glanced at the house across the street and once again saw the figure standing at the window, motionless, watching. But this time, something was different. The figure wasn't alone. There, standing beside the shadowy watcher, was another figure, smaller, almost childlike. Its head tilted unnaturally to the side, as if its neck had been broken. Sarah's breath caught in her throat as a wave of cold fear washed over her. She quickly closed the blinds and backed away from the window, her heart pounding in her chest. When Alex came home later that night, Sarah told him about what she saw. At first, he dismissed it as her imagination, a trick of the fading light. But when he looked out the window himself, he too saw the figure, staring right at him from across the street. Disturbed, Alex decided to talk to one of the neighbors about the strange house. The next morning, he struck up a conversation with Mr. Thompson, an elderly man who had lived in the neighborhood for decades. When Alex mentioned the house across the street, Mr. Thompson's expression grew dark. That place, it's been empty for years, Mr. Thompson said, his voice low. The last family that lived there, something happened to them. No one knows for sure, but they say the father went mad. He believed someone was watching them, always watching. Then one night the whole family disappeared. No one's lived there since. Chilled by the story, Alex returned home and told Sarah. They decided to avoid the windows and stay away from the house, but the feeling of being watched only grew stronger. Strange things began happening inside their home. Objects would move on their own, lights would flicker, and they would hear faint whispers in the dead of night. Sarah swore she heard footsteps outside their bedroom door, but every time Alex checked, there was no one there. One night, as a storm raged outside, Sarah woke up to the sound of someone tapping on the window. Her heart raced as she slowly turned her head. There, pressed against the glass, was the face of the figure from across the street, pale, with hollow dark eyes, and a twisted smile that seemed to stretch unnaturally wide. Sarah screamed, waking Alex, who rushed to the window, but the figure had vanished, leaving only foggy handprints on the glass. Desperate to get to the bottom of the mystery, Alex and Sarah decided to investigate the house across the street. Armed with flashlights, they made their way through the rain and up to the front door, which was surprisingly unlocked. The house was dark, cold, and filled with a thick layer of dust, as if no one had been inside for years. But as they moved through the rooms, they felt an overwhelming sense of dread, as though they were trespassing in a place that didn't belong to the living. In the upstairs bedroom, they found a small, tattered diary on the floor. The pages were filled with frantic scrawls from the previous owner, detailing his descent into madness. He wrote about the neighbor who watched, a figure that never moved from the window, always staring, always observing. He had tried to leave the house, but every time he stepped outside, the figure would be there closer and closer, until one day it was inside the house with him. As Alex read the final entry aloud, a cold gust of wind slammed the door shut.
the flashlight flickered and went out, plunging them into darkness. In the faint moonlight, Sarah saw it, the figure standing in the doorway, its hollow eyes locked onto them. The air grew thick with the sound of whispers echoing all around them. Frozen in terror, they watched as the figure slowly stepped into the room, followed by the childlike presence Sarah had seen before. The figures moved closer, their twisted smiles growing wider as they reached out, hands cold as death. When Rhea and her husband Saad moved into their cozy new home, they were excited to settle into a quiet life away from the hustle and bustle of the city. The house next door was empty, having been abandoned for years, according to the real estate agent, and the couple enjoyed the extra privacy that came with no neighbors. But that feeling of tranquility didn't last long. One night, as Rhea lay in bed, she heard it for the first time, the distinct sound of footsteps coming from the house next door. It started as a faint, rhythmic pacing back and forth, as though someone was walking restlessly through the empty rooms. At first, she thought she was imagining things, but when the sound persisted, she nudged Saad awake. Do you hear that? She whispered, her voice barely audible in the stillness. Saad strained his ears and after a few moments nodded slowly. It's probably just an animal or something he muttered, trying to brush it off, but his voice betrayed a hint of uncertainty. The next day, they both went next door to check things out. The house was old, the paint peeling, and the windows clouded with grime. The front door was locked, and there was no sign that anyone had been there in years. Saad shrugged it off, reassuring Rhea that old houses made noises, and there was nothing to worry about. But as the days passed, the footsteps grew louder, more insistent, and now they came every night. Rhea could hear them as she tried to sleep, always the same, back and forth, back and forth, like someone endlessly pacing in the empty house. She even started hearing it during the day, faint but unmistakable. Saad, too, began hearing the noises more frequently, though he stubbornly refused to acknowledge that something was wrong. It's just the house settling, he would say, trying to convince both himself and Rhea. But deep down, they both knew something wasn't right. One evening, while Saad was out working late, Rhea sat alone in the living room. The sun had just set, casting long shadows through the windows. As she flipped through the channels on TV, the footsteps started again. This time, they seemed closer, almost as if they were right on the other side of the wall. Unable to take it any longer, Rhea grabbed her phone and called Saad. You need to come home. Now, she whispered into the phone, her voice shaking. Before Saad could respond, the footsteps stopped, and for a moment, there was complete silence. Then, slowly, she heard a door creak open from next door. The sound sent a chill down her spine, and she froze in place, staring at the darkened windows of the abandoned house. She rushed to the window and peeked out, her heart racing. The house next door remained still and dark, but she couldn't shake the feeling that someone or something was there watching her. That night when Saad returned, they both decided to investigate once and for all. Armed with flashlights, they crossed the yard and made their way to the old house. The front door was still locked, but as they circled to the back, they found a window that had been broken, the glass long shattered. Cautiously, they climbed inside, the air inside the house thick with dust and the stench of decay. The wooden floor creaked beneath their feet as they made their way through the empty rooms. Everything was covered in a thick layer of grime, and it was clear that no one had lived there for years. Yet, as they reached the second floor, they saw something that made their blood run cold. Footprints in the dust. They led from one end of the hallway to the other, stopping abruptly at the far wall. The prints were fresh, as if someone had just been there. Saad pointed his flashlight down the hallway, his hand shaking. There's no way those footprints are recent. Right. Before Rhea could respond, the sound of footsteps began again, this time right above them. 
The sound of pacing back and forth echoed through the house louder and clearer than ever before, but there was no third floor, only the roof. Panicked, they turned to leave, but the footsteps followed them, matching their every move. No matter how fast they ran, the sound was right behind them, relentless and terrifying. They scrambled out of the house and rushed back to the safety of their own home, slamming the door behind them. But the footsteps didn't stop. Later that night, as they lay in bed too terrified to sleep, the footsteps returned, this time from inside their own house. First, they came from the hallway, then the living room, and finally outside their bedroom door. Rhea clutched Saad's hand, her heart pounding in her chest. Suddenly, the door to their room creaked open, and the footsteps stopped. For a long, agonizing moment, there was only silence. Then, faintly, they heard a whisper, so quiet they could barely make out the words. I'm still here. For years, the house at the end of Maplewood Lane stood shrouded in mystery. Everyone on the block had heard the rumors about the tall, imposing fence that surrounded the backyard, a barrier so high that no one could see what lay behind it. The fence looked like it had been there for decades, its wood cracked and splintered, giving off a strange, almost unnatural vibe. Zara and Ali had recently moved into a house nearby, excited to start a new chapter in their lives. Everything seemed perfect, until they started hearing the whispers about the house with the fence. The neighborhood kids dared each other to get close, but no one ever lingered for long. Strange things happened behind that fence, the older neighbors would say, their voices dropping to a hush whenever the subject came up. One evening, as Zara stood by the kitchen window washing dishes, she noticed something odd. The sun had just dipped below the horizon, and for the first time, she saw movement behind the tall wooden fence. A shadow darted across the backyard, something or someone moving quickly between the trees. She squinted, trying to get a better look, but it was gone. Curiosity gnawed at her. She mentioned it to Ali, but he brushed it off as an animal, or maybe the wind. Let's not get caught up in the local gossip, he said though there was a flicker of unease in his voice. Days passed, but Zara couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right. At night, when the neighborhood was silent, she began hearing strange sounds, a faint clinking of metal, whispers carried on the breeze, and sometimes the sound of digging. Ali worked late shifts at his new job, and Zara often found herself alone, her imagination running wild. One particularly windy night, the sounds grew louder. As she sat in the living room reading, Zara heard a loud thud from the direction of the mysterious fence. It was followed by a dragging sound, like something heavy being pulled across the ground. Her heart raced, but she couldn't resist the pull of her curiosity. She grabbed a flashlight and ventured outside. The air was thick with tension, and as she approached the edge of her yard, she noticed a faint glow coming from behind the fence. The light flickered, casting eerie shadows that danced across the worn wood. Zara hesitated for a moment before shining her flashlight through a small gap in the fence. What she saw made her stomach drop. On the other side, there was an old, decrepit shed that she hadn't noticed before. The door was slightly ajar, and from inside, a dim lantern flickered, casting long shadows on the walls. But it wasn't the shed that terrified her. It was the figure standing in front of it. A tall man, dressed in a tattered coat, was methodically digging a hole in the ground. Next to him, a large, lumpy sack lay on the ground. Zara gasped, and in that instant, the man stopped digging. He slowly turned his head, as if sensing her presence. Though she couldn't see his face clearly, she knew he had seen her. Panic surged through her, and she stumbled backward, running as fast as she could back to her house. Once inside, she locked the doors and drew the curtains, her hands trembling. She tried calling Ali, but his phone went straight to voicemail. The house felt unnervingly quiet. 
and every creak and groan of the old walls seemed amplified. The following day, Zara told Ali everything. His expression shifted from disbelief to concern, and though he tried to reassure her, he couldn't ignore the fear in her voice. They decided to confront the old man next door. That afternoon, they knocked on the front door of the house behind the fence. No one answered. The windows were covered with grime, and the air around the house felt thick with an unexplainable heaviness. They tried calling out, but there was no response. As they turned to leave, the door creaked open just slightly. Inside stood the same man Zara had seen the night before. His face was pale, his eyes sunken and hollow. He didn't say a word, only stared at them with a look of quiet menace. Ali spoke up, trying to break the tension. We, uh, noticed some strange noises coming from your yard last night. Just wanted to check if everything's all right. The man's lips curled into a thin smile, but his eyes remained cold. I'm just taking care of some unfinished business, he said, his voice low and gravelly. Nothing for you to worry about. Zara and Ali exchanged nervous glances. We just want to make sure everything's okay, Zara added, her voice faltering. The man's smile disappeared. It's better if you stay away from that fence, he said, his tone final. Without another word, he shut the door, leaving them standing in stunned silence. That night, the noises returned, louder and more sinister than ever before. Zara and Ali lay awake, listening to the clinking, the dragging, and the faint murmurs of voices that seemed to come from the earth itself. The next morning, they contacted the local authorities, hoping for answers. But when the police arrived and inspected the property, they found nothing. No shed, no tools, no signs of any digging. The backyard behind the fence was completely untouched, as though nothing had ever happened. But Zara knew what she had seen, and every night since, as she lay in bed, she heard the same sounds, the secrets behind the fence, still waiting to be uncovered.